He was only 23 when he made this. For the first time in a while, Annie Hickey Konajwak is about to watch her brother's documentary. Back in 1999, Bobby Konajwak directed My Village in Nunavik for the National Film Board. At the time, Bobby was just 23 years old. In homage to his hometown of Pervernatuk, the film shows a side of the Inuit community 1,600 kilometers northwest of Montreal that few ever see. When you hear about us in the south, it is often through stories of disaster and human suffering. While this does exist, there is far more a kind of joy we take from being together. Being together is something Annie wishes she could do with Bobby, but she can't. In 2020, Bobby died in Montreal's Bordeaux jail. He was 44 years old. I think it's not fair. He needed help and support, and he struggled and everything, but he wasn't a bad guy. According to the coroner's report summary, Bobby Konajewak died in jail on July 11, 2020 after being picked up by police for aggressive and disorganized behavior in a Montreal business. The report concludes that Kunajewak likely died of a severely irregular heartbeat exasperated by alcohol withdrawal. But the report also criticizes guards and management for not immediately bringing him to the infirmary. According to the coroner, Kunajewak's heavy perspiration, shortness of breath, and state of confusion were among the symptoms they ignored. It also notes that guards left Konajewak on the floor of his cell for over 11 hours without checking on him because inmates frequently sleep on the floor during heat waves. Coroner Kevin Spinard writes that leaving a detainee on the floor for hours when they have already shown signs of physical duress is counter to a directive that states, the role of correctional services officers is, in particular, to ensure that inmates are alive and healthy. Like, who are these people? Like, you know, they're looking at someone and saying, like, it, it doesn't matter, like, it, I'm not going to do this job. Every community needs a, a skilled accordion player. <laughs> uh, Bobby was one of them. After some hesitation, um, Annie has decided to share Bobby's I'm story. Not sure how he For one, she wants people to know that Bobby wasn't just someone who struggled with addiction and being homeless. But she also felt compelled to speak out following another recent death at the same jail. On Christmas Eve, 21-year-old detainee Nikos Dandre Spring died after guards pepper sprayed him twice while he was wearing a spit hood, a kind of mesh mask that is used to prevent biting and spitting. In Spring's case, Quebec's head coroner has called a public inquiry. I feel like it's the right thing to do, and I feel like there should be um, repercussions. Annie feels her brother's case has elements in common of Spring's. Specifically, they both show a lack of care and respect by the guards who failed to follow their own procedures and protocols. I reached out to the organization that is assisting his family, and I just wanted to let them know that uh, they are not alone. And um, that's why I, yeah, I was wondering, like, was it the same guard? Was it the same guard working that night? Bobby's coroner report, released over two years after his death, notes that Quebec's Public Security Internal Investigations Division took appropriate measures with regards to the officer on duty the night of Bobby's death. They have also recommended that the supervisor be reminded of his obligations as a manager. Quebec's Ministry of Public Security, who oversee Bordeaux, declined our requests for comment. I question the training, uh, what the procedures are, the note-taking. The Michael Arruda has spent 25 years as a Montreal police officer and now works as a crisis intervention consultant. He says that it's too soon to make a direct link between the Spring and Kunwajewak cases, but they point to issues that need addressing. I'm also concerned about the supervision. Um, in both of these cases, there was a supervisor, management, that was at the scene and took some decisions um, you know, and, and I'm wondering, are they qualified? What are the training for the supervisors when um, they're in the middle of this, when they're supposed to be guiding the agents? As for Annie, who lives just outside of Montreal, she's grateful that there's still a piece of Bobby to be found online. Something that celebrates a place and people that he held dear. As soon as the nice weather comes, the women love to go lion fishing. Watching it makes me want to go back. I'll definitely visit his grave, like when I go to Bufunijuk again. Tom Fenario, BBTN National News, Montreal.